the list of all the Godzilla films. A picture of me having a computer keyboard signed by Bruce Sterling and William Gibson, two cyberpunk writers. I have no shame. Remembering Bill Holmes. I will remember him as the snow begins to fall in the winter. I will remember him telling me about the best winter in his boy's life, or perhaps his whole life. He was six that year in Iowa, named after Indians, I believe, and it snowed in October, then rained and snowed and rained and froze again and again as it got deeper into winter. I will remember him with delight in his eyes and voice telling me about the ice that coated everything everywhere so that he could skate or sled or slide everywhere all over town as a boy in Iowa during the best winter in his boy's life. Remembering Bill Holmes. I really like this picture. I made it when I was, I don't know, you've got the birth of it. <coughs> Did you cover my deal? Ross Lockridge, I read about his death in news clippings in the college archives, you'll never find it. I first heard about him years back, before there was a fence cafeteria in Commons, before they tried to move two giant trees without killing them. They killed them. There used to be four beautiful trees in the backyard of the college. Construction caused the removal of two of the trees. They tried to transplant them $10,000 a piece, I think. Like I said, they died. When I heard that Hollywood planted a tree out there, the whole thing became slightly sacramental to my 35 millimeter mind. That's when I first heard this story. In 1957, Elizabeth Taylor and Montgomery Cliff were about to be seen in a film that was touted as a successor to Gone with the Wind. It was called Rain Tree County. The star-studded premiere was attended by notables of the city of Boston, the Commonwealth of Massachusetts, the Hollywood motion picture industry, and a distinguished contingent from Simmons College. The film was an adaptation of the best-selling novel written by a Simmons professor. To further celebrate the event, a golden rain tree was planted by an obscure Hollywood starlet in our backyard. The rain tree was a dream. It was a beacon shining in the darkness. It was a place, a haven for lost souls who sought peace and solace in their lives. The young man who wrote the book is said to have poured himself into the project for six years. He had little contact with students and sometimes was a cause for distraction for his wife and his children. He was a poor college English instructor who was crafting a dream about, a, about the pain and suffering of the human condition and the magic of something special reflected in the image of the rain tree. Houghton Mifflin, Mifflin received a massive manuscript in the summer of 1946. In July of 1947, the young man whose total personal fortune was slightly under $100, walked 21 blocks from Penn Station to New York, New York to a meeting at a hotel. The news he received there was phenomenal. MGM was interested as well as the publisher. He left the meeting with an award of $150,000. You may read the rest if you like. In the name of the Father, I wrote these articles in the Simmons News in the 70s and early 80s. Tonight I walked outside in the pouring rain carrying a sopping wet star market bag with a steak, a loaf of bread, and a bottle of orange juice in it. Alone in my apartment there was a case of beer on the ice. Alone I would feast after leaving the rain as I walked, I thought. I missed so much of what once had been in my life because things had gone. I felt like I was being erased, smoothed over as if lines of my character were vanishing. I felt somehow less as I thought of losing the people I once had known and whom I once had loved. I thought about fathering, the joys of fatherhood. I thought that I would like my daughter to say that her father enjoyed dreaming about making love in the rain, those hot rains that fall during the summer falling onto fields of soft green glass, grass and clover far away from the eyes of civilization, late in the day when the sun is slanted, casting shadows before the rain clouds come. 
Before the rain begins to fall light, then heavy, then begins to almost drown the lovers in the field, I would like my daughter to say that her father dreamed about making love in the rain with the rumble of thunder far away in the sky and very near in his heart. Perhaps my daughter would say that she wondered if her temperament and composure and delicate combination of lights and shadows was due to being conceived in some summer-soaked field during love accompanied by the rain and crashes of thunder and soft, hot winds. I would hope that my daughter would gently smile at that thought and bear a gentle pride for that man. During my walk, I thought of all this. You know, I have never had a child and I've never made love in the summer field during the rain. When the old men draw pictures of naked young girls, perhaps they feel death breathing down their necks, her shadow passing across their faces. And I end with a white Christmas. The cold of winter has finally come upon us. The moon is full and deep into the cold night. The moon wears a ring, crystals of ice dancing before our optic nerves. This are an essay. This always have been essays, not articles. This have been mine for one year now. I mean what I say. I say what I feel. Some beautiful people have told me that they have cried sometimes at what they read here. They have said you touch something that I know. I know what you mean. That is all enough for me. With that, I can lay me down to sleep gently like a child. This is where I began a year ago, this typewriter, this cold, this hour of the night, this office, this cold, about this close to Christmas. But then, this was fearful and unknown. This was the cry of my soul with a new small voice. Now I have my voice, my stride. I speak not only for myself. If there were only, only there were a magic tongue, a language hidden from the mind of everyday life, a language to be learned and used only by the wisest and gentlest of people, a language direct to God, and we could ask for help. Maybe a language of children for the innocent shall come and lead the way. Oh God, would I use it now? And for those who must ask, this is not blasphemy, it is a prayer, but it is angry. The language of prayer, I could use it now. Come on, God, give us a break for Christ's sake. Jesus, God, where the hell are we going? This night is pretty goddamn dark. I know too many beautiful, warm, and loving people whose lives are like the candles that they hold. And those lights are flickering in the thick of all this. Have a heart. And the darkness became the night of the soul, and the night sky arced, ached. And its darkest moment had stopped, and it became the sky again. And in the midst of the night, there appeared moments of light, and we saw them as stars, and at the edge of the fabric of the sky, there came a great light, like the moon, and people kept saying the words of the magic language of God, and hearts became lighter, and they looked up into the sky, and the sky was filled with heavenly hosts praising God and saying, Glory to God in the highest, Lord God of hosts, heaven and earth, are filled with thy glory, Hosanna in the highest, blessed are we who come in the name of the Lord. And there were white winds swirling and fluttering, winds and wings of snow, and there was an illumination only found in the hearts of children. For the sun came out last night and it sang to me. I have talked to God as best I can. Of course, it may be hard to understand being in that language and all. The cold of the winter and the light of the moon still swirl about me. I can wrap them like a shawl about me and go home into the night. But I shall linger just another moment. This Christmas I shall be with my mother and my father, my brother and sisters, and I shall be among friends. I am more alone than last year when this began, and I am not so lonely. I have received many gifts, and they have not been for Christmas. As this year goes crashing toward its end, I look back with gratitude upon all of you who have brought these gifts. Thank you for sharing yourself with me and for accepting me pretty much as I am. It has meant a lot. On Christmas Day, I'll be visiting two young cousins of mine. One is too old to remember crawling up into my lap like a cat long ago and too grown up now to do it. But her sister will come greet me with a special smile and a small bouquet in her tiny hands. And I shall have come home. May it be good to you. Thank you.